Armored Core Lore, Balaam Industries, History, Overwhelm its enemies with their material superiority. This is the strategy of the Balaam Corporation, one of the two major corporations that seeked out the Coral on Rubicon 3. Their history is still being looked into, with their reach unknown at this point. However, perhaps you will allow me to tread into theory ground here with this corporation for the time being. While where this corporation originated from is currently unknown, it suggested through the part FC0008 Talbot that Balaam was part of the Jupiter War. With his reading, taking lessons from the Jupiter War, Balaam improved the missile performance of this FCS product, leading to the creation of this long cellar with excellent overall balance. It's this along with one of its red gun members, G1, being known as the hero of the Jupiter War, suggests Balaam was around during this time, dating back before the fires of Ibis, nearly 50 years ago. With this much time behind them, it's no wonder the corporation managed to gain ground in making Dafeng Core Industries a subsidiary, which is important, as by definition, a subsidiary typically becomes part of a parent company to provide the parent company with specific synergies, such as increased tax benefits, reduced regulation, diversified risk, or assets in the form of earnings, equipment, or property. Usually, companies take ownership of subsidiaries to extend their range of products and services beyond what would be expected from the parent company's brand. Which is exactly what Balin would do with products like the Borna Missa tank legs, which would be used to carry heavy Dafang weapons. Along with this, Dafang would also create a generator for Balin, the Ling Tai, they are also noted to have worked with Balaam to create the Ming Tang generator. Since Balaam does not have any generators of its own, this is perhaps why they needed Da Feng to create these parts to allow them to become this powerful corporation. However, the boosters of all Balaam crafts are noted to be furlong parts, notably the P04 series, which is said to be the second generation booster developed by Furlong. This may be simply because they are the only corporation who Balaam would buy from because of the reputation of other makers. Or perhaps if we step into theory territory once more, it may be because Balaam saw what furlong technology could do during the Jupiter War. After all, if missiles were what made them rethink their own FCS, was it possible then this Jupiter War was a corporation war between Balaam and Archibus, much like the corporation war of Mars seen in Armored Core 2? If this is the case, then Archibus must have been using furlong FCSs at the time, and it seems the lower members of the Vespers still do years later. Still, this is where theories end, as we now move into time we know. After the fires of Ibis, the PCA focused on rebuilding Rubicon 3, and most likely had the corporations to move in to aid with the construction. After some time, Coral was beginning to be found again, as such Balaam would see this as their material they would use to overpower their foes, as such the corporation moved in. Balaam's fate, however, in this race for Coral, is one that cannot be changed no matter the choices of 621, a path of fire and death by the higher-up's desire to control through numbers. Balaam's introduction would be the mission Destroy the Artillery Installations, where being the mouthpiece for Da Feng, they would issue a request to all mercenaries to take out the Bao's artillery set up by the Rubicon Liberation Front in the contaminated city. Not because the city is of any importance, but because the front would hinder their coral survey by being in the way. As such, Balaam will pay extra should any mercenary take out the MTs of the front in the area too, as they want the enemy weakened. 621 would take this mission and complete it, making quite the impression on the corporation, who would next shove with the mission Destroy the Transport Helicopter. Asking for 621 personally, the corporation, being the mouthpiece for Da Feng once again, tells the mercenary the group has committed to using force against the Liberation Front. Again, this is quite odd, seeing as they used force the first time to deal with the front's artillery. Yet, in this mission, 621 would take out some transport helicopters heading to resupply the Strider and make quick work of them. It's here then that Walter and G1 Michigan, the leader of Balaam's in-house AC squad named the Red Guns, would talk about having 621 join a pair of Red Guns on a mission to attack the front dam complex in southern Belius. Walter is sure 621 can handle themselves, and it wouldn't hurt his hound to mix with the red guns. It's on this mission to attack the dam complex, 621 would be given the call sign G13 among the red guns by G1. It's also here where 621 can either help the two red guns they're enlisted to work with, G4 Volta and G5 Higasu, 
with taking out the dam, or they can turn on the two red guns, costing Walter a small fortune to repair the two AC-621 just wrecked and disrupted mission. After this, Balin would not be heard from for a bit until the mission Operation Wall Climber, where Archibus takes great delight in showing 621 that Balin tried to attack the wall first, and ended up being forced to retreat with a lot of losses, including the death of G4 Volta. This seems to upset the Balin Corporation, who we can see in the mission Prisoner Rescue manages to capture three of the front members, perhaps as payback for what happened at the wall. 621 can help these prisoners, or not, instead choosing to help Balaam by retrieving the combat logs of fallen front members from the route to the wall V4 Rusty took. With these logs, Balaam would once again go quiet, with 621 not hearing from the corporation until after attack the watchpoint, to which Walter would go off to sell the information about the coral to Balaam who at once issued a request to 621 to conduct a survey into the place where the coral is heading, the central ice field. Once 621 achieves this with the help of Syndicala, Balaam is noted to be making their way across from the Bellius region to the central ice field, and while they do this, they send 621 a job to steal the survey data of Archibus, who had made their way over already and started to survey the area. It's during this that the PCA suppression fleet would come into effect, pushing back the corporations, including Balaam, who would both suffer a number of key base losses, including the Jorgen refueling base, noted by Rusty to have been a Balaam survey base, only to lose it to the PCA within a day. Yet Balaam would not order the Raven to try and recapture it for them, instead to head to the Ingebert Tunnel and take out the sensor the PCA is planning to repair. It's during this mission 621 would have to avoid Coral bursting out from the ground, and having survived this, returns to base to have a message from another red gun, G6, who introduces himself and replays a message to 621 from G1. Attention, gun 13 red- I have a message for you from Commander Michigan. Following your success at the Angerbred Tunnel, sounds like you stared death in the face when all that coral came rushing up. That's one way to light a fire under your ass. Keep it alive for the next field trip. Over and out! Once again, 621 will not hear from Balin for a while, perhaps fighting their own battles with the PCA, until they request 621 to eliminate the enforcement squads of PCA, holding the wall so they can move in and take it over. Yet while 621 may be able to help Balin with this, what comes next is the PCA letting the ice worm free, causing Balin and Archibus to have to work together to take out the beast. However, once they have done this, it turns out while Balin would take the credit for killing the mighty Beast of the Ice, Archibus would manage to strengthen their own forces with PCA tech from their attacks on PCA bases. What this would lead to is an unbalance of powers, where Balaam is now on the back foot, and it would only get worse from here. For with the discovery of Watchpoint Alpha, Balaam would charge headlong in, resulting in major losses and deserters from the Watchpoint's very first defense system, named Nepenthes. A few notable deserters are G5 and G3. With little forces left, 621 would meet a few Balaam MTs within the depths of the Watchpoint, but not the number the Great Corporation once boasted about. Instead, after fighting with Archibus forces in the depths now, this would lead to the final push by the last remaining MTs of Balaam and the Red Gun leader G1 in the mission Intercept the Red Guns. It's here the Red Guns and Balaam's mighty military would be wiped out by 621 or V4 Rusty, resulting in G1's death, and Walter explained that politicians will now fight their war. This suggests that Balaam will now have to answer to the government for what they've done. This is the end of Balaam's time on Rubicon. After this, the corporation is not mentioned again in either the Die's Cast ending or the Liberator of Rubicon ending, instead only in the Fires of Raven ending, which suggests the corporations, including Balaam, would agree that the planet is best left alone. Products Balaam's products include a series of armoured core frames, including the HD001 Milande set and the Milande C3 set, frames that offer all around defensive against kinetic, energy, and explosive weapons. These frames however, can be used with other Balaam AC parts, like the Veril Petropod legs and head part used mostly by the commander of the Red Guns, offering a faster style of piloting. We also have the Bornemissa tank legs which are used to support the weight of heavy Duffung weapons and allow for heavy hitting styles of piloting. Balaam also produced the close range focus fire control systems known as the FC-008 Talbot and the FC-006 Abbott. 
This is all the AC parts made by Balaam, however the corporation did not shy away from armoured core weapon production. These included arms weapons like the Curtis and Harris linear rifles, the Turner and Scudder assault rifles, the Ludlow machine gun, the Holderman and Zimmerman shotguns, the Quacole and the Ducklet handguns, and finally for arm weapons, the Ashmead pile bunker. For back weapons, this is a short list with only two, the Morlet spread bazooka and the Huxley bullet orbit. It's with this the report on the corporation known as Balaam Industries comes to an end.